Welcome everyone to a quick test review and summary. Here with uh, the Ryzen 7950X and this Gigabyte Auros X670E. Uh, and I tested because it's in the news, right? breaking news, stops the presses. AMD P State driver for the Linux kernel updated, latest, greatest, SOC support, and so on. And of course, we tested that here, right? I pulled in the patches uh, here in T2, I rebuilt my kernel. And if you want to test this, except pulling down um, the patches here of MDP state, of course, it is a series of nine, um, you only need to make sure not to auto load uh, a CPU, CPU frequency, CPU frec driver. So the results are not the most amazing, right? So make this short. As I tested probably last year with the 5950X or so, or the other year before that with a 3950X. Theoretically that should, well, or it leads to wider frequency scaling and theoretically eventually preferred core boosting of all those cores are not equal. But long story short, it significantly degrades performance for me, right? This is my best previous overclock and stuff. So we're losing up to 15% single core and 2.7% multi core, which is of course not amazing if you carefully dialed in your um, undervolting, your memory overclocking, your PBO curve optimization and stuff. So you carefully have fought for, also paid with the most expensive memory for the last 15, if not 3% performance, and then you lose it all for this AMD P state driver. So, longer story. So, what is happening? So, it might still be worth it if you want to save energy. So what happens is that this clock's lower, right? Um, with a, also, I, I wonder why this, also, yeah, we OBS live stream and a la Crity and, and, and Firefox and stuff, but I wonder a little bit why not more cores are parked at 400 megahertz. The major difference is that with the generic ACPI CPU frequency driver, the Zen 4 and Zen 3 CPUs are hoovering at their base clock at I think this is 3000 megahertz. So this is significantly further decreasing the idle base clock from 3000 down to 400, which is obviously amazing. I'm not entirely sure how this explains this massive single core um, loss. Maybe it is that it just takes longer. It's just the latencies adding up of bumping the clock, increasing the clocks. Then if you run stuff from 400, then up to the 4.5, uh, 5.5, 5.6 boost. Probably, I'm not the only one who's finding this. So yeah, long story short, it decreases performance. If you are, because yesterday's video there on my mom and channel, people are like, yeah, AMD P3 date driver and might improve performance and stuff. No, it still doesn't. Um, and I believe I didn't had to load this uh, with, oh, I didn't type today, AMD P state. With this shared, I think it still does not um, by default enable shared memory. So as far as I've seen this, because the previous, I think, either 5950X or 1350X, maybe both, supports this only via the shared memory, which sounds efficient, shared memory, yeah, but otherwise directly register mapped, apparently. So as I didn't had to load this module with shared mem, I would assume that it, therefore, the 1750X supports, or the 7000 series supports this direct register programming stuff, which previously AMD engineers said is more efficient. So yeah, it should use a more efficient thing, but yet more, more, more. The AMD people uh, there announced on the mailing list um, energy savings, even with Epic servers. So yeah, if you are, if you have mixed load and you are after the maximum energy savings, also for your desktop CPU, then go for it. Otherwise, um, or I mean, on the other scale, if you constantly load your server, you don't even lose so much. The only problem for me, like think embarrassingly parallel open source compilations like the Linux kernel or not even Firefox and Rust, because there we often have four, if not six minutes LTO link times, and then I guess potentially maybe, and uh, maybe I should bench benchmark that, leave me the comments below. Like and subscribe, there's only so much I can benchmark. 
for the Linux kernel, because what is the issue? If if you have a similar lo a similar loss as for Geekbench when you LTO link Rust and Firefox stuff, um, which at times even run on, on the 7950X, runs at times four minutes on the 5950X, it run at times six minutes, um, and you have such a 15% loss, then that's certainly not ideal for this embarrassing, embarrassingly long single-threaded um, link time optimization times. For the Linux kernel, we have a similar um, um, loss. So previously, my best builds have been here with this with this CPU with three minutes forty-seven forty-eight, and this AMDP state we lose up to six seconds. Worst case, so that is a bit. Um, you can gain some speed back if you run the scaling governor performance, but that what that does, as far as I've seen, is obviously running the CPU always at the highest highest frequency. So yeah, that certainly defeats the purpose of running that in the first place, and you can just run a CPI CPU frequency scaling or manually set performance. Other new sites have found similar here of uh, for Ronix is Linux plumbing website. Um, so their findings here are similar. Um, AMD P state performance can be at times faster, although I slightly wonder, I didn't quite find that. I wonder how much of this is measuring um, error margin here, because basically I wonder what should be their major difference if you just run the CPU at the full clock. Then ACPI, CPU frequency scaling. So as I said, for me, better performance, right? MDP states get you to similar findings to mine here. You lose some performance that is get you to MD. So yeah, 217. Actually, let's, let's quickly compute that. To, was it 71 to MDP states get you to 256. Um, yeah, five percent. This was around, obviously. Yeah. This is who can type. Yeah, five percent. Um, similar. What did I had here? I had even more than that. All right, fifteen to three-ish. The thing is, of course, it depends on the load, right? How much the single and multi-threaded load um, fluctuates here. And uh, probably don't need to go through all of this. Um, what's here? The lower is better. So even here, ACP, ICPU frequency on demand, you still have good CPU scaling. Um, funny that also I wonder how I'm measuring a currency. So yeah, I can confirm that. Um, so for me, I'm a little bit torn between, yeah, what is the point of manually fine tuning, especially your overclock and, and undervolt and stuff. But even if you don't, right, if you use this stock sync, you buy the most expensive Lenovo sync station there with Ryzen um, or other pre-built stuff, or you just build it yourself, you DIY your stuff like I, and you run this at clock frequencies for the maximum render less stability, then you still waste this, right? Um, you still face a similar margin of 3 to 15% or so. Um, so your Linux kernel compile time here is found by other websites. And similar to my finding, right? Also, CACP, ICPU frequency performance, um, probably don't do that, right? Recurring theme pro tip, don't run this with performance because that locks your CPU frequencies to their maximum value. Um, also here, AMDP state schedule. It, this is not entirely mapping my findings, right? It mo mostly shows building the news kernel is embarrassingly parallel, so you want to run your CPUs as max clock most of the time as possible. So this contradicts my finding a little bit. Just as I look at this now, seconds here, fewer is better. Um, my time's of course longer because my stuff includes all the freaking modules. This is only the kernel, I guess, as fast as it is, as it takes 3 minutes 50 for me. and. So yeah, it is similar here, AMD P-State, CPU frequency scaling here, it is probably measuring tolerance. I mean, all of this stuff I would obviously call me measuring tolerance. Um, but the recurring theme, don't do that, right? 
when you have idle loads or other single threaded load, not only do you waste boosting potential for embarrassingly long single threaded links, LTO link times, you also waste energy, right? Each time your stuff is idle, you stay on a website, um, you go meditate about, about bugs and, and your code and features, you obviously waste power. At LCV here, CPU peak frequency. Um, so yeah, this is similar to what I just said, right? What I showed you here. Um, we idle at 400 megahertz instead of 3000, as seen here, exactly what I summarized for you here, 400, that's exactly, exactly what I said to you. I wish a little bit that, also, yeah, you can't combine that, right? I just wanted to say, I wish a little bit you could combine the best of both worlds, but obviously you can't if most of the performance impact is due to idling at 400 and all the latencies of scaling that up to 5.5-ish, whatever, single and multi-core booth there, then obviously you can't have the best of both worlds. For me, Mm, yeah, I'm even wondering, should I, I mean, it's kind of sort of not worth it I, to commit this in T2. I obviously could just commit this. But the question is for what, unless you want to save energy. Um, so energy here was also somewhere, power consumption. So what's here, how to read this piece, that get util. So that is least what's. Um, yeah, some of these findings do not quite match my finding here. I would need to connect a power meter, but I have it hard to believe that the difference between a CPI schedule here is that much higher. What is it for next test suite? Is it, is it all of test suite? It depends, of course, how much... Well, I mean, yeah, okay, it could kind of be like that. If this is all of the test suite, over 100 tests they write here, then that could be the case if you have massive single threaded runs, right? Then um, you indeed, as I mentioned, have much better idle savings. So yeah, maybe I could, I mean, depend, considering that we are quite supporting future on this plan, maybe I should commit this and then give you the option to run this if you want to. And then temperature, temperatures here. Um, also, this is really a little bit strange here um, that it kind of makes no sense that the temperatures of ACP, ICPU frequency performance are here similar performance schedule. Some, some benchmarks here, maybe shall I can subscribe, I need more funding, I need to run the test myself. I have it hard to believe that this is so similar um, when otherwise the performance between performance and MDP state. Some of the stuff doesn't make sense. Some of the other stuff is what I find too. Uh, maybe we commit this as, as a win-win situation of if you wanna um, want to run this at home, I only need to check. Um, I don't wanna commit this as nine patches here. So probably get all of this MDP state stuff into the P state patch. Um, let's double check, does this hopefully include all? Oh wait, this was also wrong, so 119, 10, 6 files. Because I pulled this straight out of the email, this is where I have them all old. The problem is of course adding this to T2, our amazing Linux distribution, creates issues, um, headache for the next version. So basically the next time this doesn't apply anymore, I will just wipe it. But for now, um, at the edge of computing, at a state of the art, you have that for playing along at home. Let's name this hotfix so data could delete this. Our bot, AI bot, previous video. MDP state of hotfix, MDP state. It's not a really hot fix, but more like hot update but um, just our naming convention for stuff that can be auto-deleted. Right, anyway, I hope you found this interesting. For me, I'm um, also another, uh, another pro tip, um, all the tips and one last thing. I thought my memory overclock and undervolting and stuff was stable, but probably due to the wider 
frequency uh, that we have this here, probably due to the wider frequency spun, um, what I thought was stable and what was running 20 or 16 hours since yesterday crashed with this, right? Probably, I speculate here, my guesstimate is due to lower clocks and then higher uh, voltage variations, right? I, I would expect the voltage scales will more, way more down so that if you undervolt your stuff, your Ryzen CPU, and you run then with MDP state that lowers the clock, you also get a lower voltage. And not only might this then with undervolting, like offset undervolting of minus zero, zero, two, five, or whatever volt, not be stable at 400 megahertz, it also puts more stress to your power um, supply and, and, and voltage regulator modules because they need to scale even wider, even faster, even more often stuff. So, um, yeah. And probably, I, well, I diet this back now, my memory shut timing and stuff, because if it's already unstable in this situation, I don't want to run this 24 seven when I want to release a Linux distribution. And I don't want spur spurious and random crashes um, due to that. So one, one last pro tip here. Question keyboard, I'm using a Sun Type 6, I think that is. Keyboard, um, not the most amazing memory. And I wonder why so many people ask. I have other keyboards there, previous video, right? I also need to, because that is Sun Serial 9 pin, I guess, mini DIN or so. I have there 18Z 2.0, whatever. Uh, DIY to USB converter thing. I mostly, ironically, I mostly, I mean, besides I have some spark stations and stuff, right? Um, ironically, I run with that due to this 10, also yeah, always like questions and then we digress a little bit. But uh, ironically, I run, wanted to run this and patched OBS for this 10 or 11 um, extra keys of stop to copy and paste and stuff. And I used this for my OBS scene selection while live streaming. Ironically, with Wayland, it doesn't work anymore due to global hotkey handling and stuff, and stuff. So I switched to keyboards that are now, is not the most amazing, <laughs> but leave me in the comments below. And now the one feature I used it for doesn't work anymore because of the future that is the Wayland Linux desktop. Anyway, I hope you learned something and uh, found this useful. Leave me in the comments below. Um, do you want more savings? Do you want more performance? Undervolting, overclocking. Looking for your, forward to your comments. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I hope you see you soon for all the next test reviews and cool low-level stuff to come. And if you have more unrelated questions, leave them below. Maybe I still answer them. Or in the comments anyway.